Now let's move to next method format. Format method is very powerful and returns a string object where each placement field within the string, which is surrounded by curly braces, replaced by argument or keyword argument. In this example, my string has two replacement fields, and my format method contains two arguments, string Sunday and then TJ value 5. If you look at the output string, the format method has replaced the replacement fields with the arguments in the ascending order. You can also give the index position of an argument in the replacement field, as shown in this example. You can also give the key value in the replacement field if the argument is keyword argument. So these were very simple examples of format method. Format method can do a lot of other things other than just replacing the values. A replacement field can also contain format specifier, which dictates how each value will be formatted within the resulting string, such as number of decimal places. Here you can see the complete journal structure of format specifier. The format specification always begins with a colon. In this example, the point to value after the colon is the precision field, which specifies the number of digits after the decimal point within the resulting string. The small letter F, which stands for float, is the type field, which indicates the type of data within the resulting string. In my next example, I have set the type field to E, which stands for exponent notation, so that the resulting string is in scientific notation. Similarly, you can also set align, sign, fill and width fields according to your requirements, as shown in the following examples. For more information on format specifiers, please read the official Python documentation. The format map method is very similar to format method, but it allows users to have dictionary object as argument, as shown in this example. Now let's move to next few methods, which are very similar to each other, and they all return either boolean true or false. Is alphanumeric method returns boolean true if all characters in the string are alphanumeric, and there is minimum one character in the string, otherwise it returns false. Whereas the alpha method returns boolean true if all characters are alphabets, otherwise it returns false. The isDecimal method returns true if all characters in the string are decimal characters, otherwise it returns false. The isDigit method returns true if all characters in the string are digits, otherwise it returns false. Digits are decimal numbers, subscripts, superscripts, etc. The isNumeric method returns boolean true if all characters are numeric which includes digits, vulgar fractions, subscripts, superscripts, Roman numerals, currency numerators, etc. The isIdentify method returns true if the string is a valid Python identifier. The isLower method returns true if all characters in the string are in lower case. The isPrintable method returns true if all characters in the string are printable or if the string is empty. For example, new line and tab characters are not printable. The isSpace method returns true if there is only white space characters in the string, otherwise it returns false. The isTitle method returns boolean true if the entire string is a title case string, that is, the first character of each word is an uppercase letter. The isUpper method returns true if entire string is uppercase string. The next method join takes an iterable such as a list as an argument and returns a string by putting the separator string between each element of the iterable. Note that the iterable argument can only contain string values. In my first example, I have a tuple as argument and I have no separator string. So the join method concatenate all the elements of tuple object and return them as a single string object. In my next example, I have an underscore as separator and join method returns a string object by putting the separator string between each element of the iterable. Similarly, you can also have list containing string elements as an argument, as shown in next example. Strip method returns a string where all leading and trailing characters passed as argument are removed from the original string. If there is no argument, strip method removes all leading and trailing whitespace characters from the original string. In my first example, I have string cats as an argument. And in my next example, I have a whitespace character as an argument, which removes all leading and trailing whitespace characters from the original string. The lstrip and rstrip methods are just like strip method, but lstrip method removes the leading and rstrip method removes the trailing characters, which are passed as argument from the original string. 
Now let's move to next two methods, MakeTrans and Translate. MakeTrans method returns a translation table that can be used as argument in the Translate method. Whereas the Translate method returns a copy of the original string, in which all characters are replaced according to the translation table. In this example, I have string object my string 1, and I want to replace alphabet P with capital letter P and alphabet I with S. So I call make trans methods with different numbers of arguments, and they all return translation table. If you look at make trans method, you can see make trans method takes up to three arguments. If it's only one argument, then it must be a dictionary object, where keys are the values you want to replace with the dictionary object values, as shown in this example. If there are two arguments, then there must be two string objects of equal length, where the first string contains the characters which you want to replace with the characters in the second string. And if there is third argument, then it must be again a string object, and all characters inside that string will be replaced by none. If you look at the output of translate methods, which takes translation tables as argument, you can see the letter P is now replaced with capital letter P and letter I with S, and the last string contains no exclamation sign. Now let's move to next method partition, which takes a single argument separator and returns a tuple that contains the string before the separator, the separator itself, and the string after the separator, as shown in this example. If there is no such separator in the string, the tuple returned by partition method contains the original string which is followed by two empty strings. The rpartition method is very similar to partition method, but the search for the separator begins from right to left, as shown in these examples. The replace method returns a copy of original string in which contents of original string are replaced by another substring. It takes three arguments, old which is a substring you want to replace, new that is a substring you want to put in place instead of old string and the option argument count. If the option argument count is given, only the first count occurrences are replaced. In this example, I replaced the alphabet P with capital letter P and in my next example, I have set the count argument to 2 so that it replaces only first two P's with capital letter P in the string. The split method takes two arguments, a separator sep and an optional argument max splits and returns a list object which contains string elements which are splitted according to the separator in the original string. If there is no such separator in the original string, the split method returns a list object which contains the original string as single element. If separator is not specified or equals to none, then the white space character is used as separator. The optional argument max split gives the maximum number of splits. The or split method is just like split method but it works from right to left. The split lines method is very similar to split method, but the separators are special characters, such as a new line character, carriage return, line tabulation, etc. If the option argument keep ends is true, special characters are also included in the resulting list. The swap case method returns a copy of the original string, where the uppercase characters in the string are converted to lowercase characters and the lowercase characters to uppercase characters. The title method returns a copy of original string where only the first character of each word in the string is uppercased. The upper method returns a copy of the original string where all characters in the string are in uppercase. Now let's move to our next and last method Z field. The Z field method returns a string that is left filled with zeros and has total length equal to width argument. In this example, I have string of length 4 and I call ZFill method with width set to 10. The ZFill method returns a string which is left filled with zeros and has total length of 10. If the length of original string is less than or equal to the width argument, ZFill method returns the original string. I hope now you have basic understanding of all string methods. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.